Hi, I'm Mark Baber. I'm the Technical Marketing Manager here in the UK and Ireland for Sony's Photo Channel. Welcome to this pre-recorded webinar going out live today with Campkins cameras on their Facebook Live page as part of their Cambridge Photography Week. So welcome. This is the Sony Lens Clinic. It's very popular with face-to-face -face events and online webinars. And we're going to go through all the different technology of what goes on in that lens barrel when you depress the shutter, plus looking at the range and how many lenses we've got in the range, looking at the one mount system and so on. So as we said, this is part of the Cambridge Photography Week and we are supporting Campkins cameras. So if you don't get a chance to see this pre-recorded webinar, come and see us on the 30th of October where we'll be live at the Guildhall in Cambridge with Campkins cameras. So let's get straight into this webinar and let's find out a little bit more about our lens range and why you maybe consider Sony technology as your next purchase. Or if you're a Sony user, this is a great opportunity to find out what really goes on inside our technology. Let's have a look in more detail at what we're going to cover today. So welcome to the Sony Lens Clinic with myself, Mark Baber. So today's all about lenses, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but since 2013, we've been making Sony mirrorless lenses for our Alpha system. So it's nearly 10 years on now. Uh, new Sony cameras are still talking to technology that we made back in 2013. So Sony camera technology has really evolved and will continue to, to do so. So this is me. Uh, before we start, I'm Mark Baber, like I said, and uh, I'm basically the events manager for our consumer uh, events within the Photos Channel. And here I am with my son, and we're big uh, football fans that you see here, Crystal Palace, and uh, we uh, and that plays a, a bit of a, a part in this webinar as well. And he's been my model actually for the last eighteen months at home, and my daughter, and my dog, and my wife when we've been creating content for our retailers uh, whilst in lockdown. So uh, he features in this webinar as well. So now, over the last uh, two years, nearly now, we've been bringing uh, live webinars to you uh, via our uh, retailer channels, uh, including Campkins Cameras here. And I just wanted to say that this is uh, our, our first uh, return to webinars again for the last few months. Uh, but just to let you know, before COVID, we, we had put together over 600 events face-to-face -face for uh, our retailers. And just here is just a few images uh, that we've put together to show you that we've taken over retailer stores, universities, shops. And uh, you can see here that when I'm presenting online, you can see that I'm presenting from my shed as well. So uh, hopefully many, many webinars and face-to-face -face images to come. And uh, on Saturday, the trade show with Campkins Hamels will be the first time uh, since the photography show that we returned to a major uh, trade show. So we're really, really looking forward to this. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? Well, there's me down in the left-hand corner there uh, saying hello, waiting to uh, carry on with the webinar. So we're going to look at lens technology. We're going to look at autofocus technology. We're going to look at the one mount system. We're going to look at a brief look at the alpha range. And we're also going to look at, of course, the lens range. We've got some images and demonstrations to go through all the way through as well. Just to remind you that this is a pre-recorded webinar uh, that's gone out live today. So just to give you an idea, these are just the 44 native lenses that we've got in our range uh, back in 2013. This is full frame alone, and we'll come on to in a second uh, the additional lenses on top of that, 20 APS-C lenses as well, which makes 64 native lenses in the whole of our range. So what does it actually mean then, one mount? Well, my assistant Mark is going to say a few words in a second, but uh, it basically means you don't need an adapter to put on our different alpha cameras. So whether it's APS-C, full frame, uh, we have APS-C and full frame bodies, and even our professional camcorder range will fit the same mount. So here's Mark now talking to through uh, our one mount system and a little bit more information about how it all works. So let's have a look at the system itself. The EMAX system is a good starting point to find out more about Sony lenses. So the EMAX system is so for Sony, and that's for the APS-C, the full frame, and the cinema line bodies as well. So for example, if you've got a full frame lens, you can use it on APS-C, and if you've got an APS-C lens, you can use it on a full frame body. And if you do do that, you need to times the uh, crop factor by 1.5 times to get the 35 millimeter equivalent. But it's such a great system. There's 58 native lenses, including accessories. You can choose from wide angle to telephoto. And it's for you know uh, amateurs, professionals, and enthusiasts like myself. So it's not just set for one type of uh, photography genre. It's for everybody. And whether that's a small compact system to, to a, a more larger uh, 
professional system, then as you can see from this video, all the lenses fit. And I think that's just a, a really strong point that you don't need any adapters or anything like that uh, to, to bring the, the handshake or the, the, the technology uh, to life. So as I said, there's 58 native lenses in the range. We'll have a little bit more uh, closer uh, look at the uh, lenses in more detail in a second. Uh, but just to let you know, that's one mount strategy for the whole system. Okay, well, when I made that uh, mark there, previous mark, uh, we uh, in the range had 58 lenses. Um, and in such a short space of time, actually, as you can hear me at the beginning of this webinar, we now have 64. So lens development is really important to us. And um, it's very easy that we can spend hours looking at stills and video. But today we're going to be focusing on stills. And within stills, we're going to be looking at three key fundamentals of innovation. So that's resolution speed and artificial intelligence so we're going to look at resolution and what sensors are in our cameras we're going to look at speed and how we look uh, how our lenses perform uh, to the for example high frames per second we're then going to look at artificial intelligence in the form of autofocus technology and in particular iaf and tracking and again while sony's cameras technology is evolving what we're going to see is now is how our native lens range can get the best out of this technology so let's have a look at resolution in more detail. So since we launched the first mirrorless full frame camera in 2013, our sensor technology has evolved into higher megapixels and improved functionality. Now our sensors have improved to enable our cameras to reach near medium format levels, uh, like pixel shift in our A7R ranges. And I'm not saying that Sony technology is medium format, but with the pixel shift mode, you can shoot nearly 200 uh, million pixels and uh, edit this to come out at 60 million pixels. It's quite remarkable how that technology works. But of course, sensors have also improved readout speed and also, and also buffer capabilities. So let's remember as well that a lot of what I'm showing today is in-house Sony technology. Now, Sony lenses perform at the highest levels of detail, speed, and resolution, but it isn't always about that. Our technology today is also focusing on reducing and elim uh, eliminating artifacts like chromatic aberration, and fringing. Here's Mark again looking at this in more detail. Okay, so let's have a look at the technology in more detail, mainly around the G Master lenses and why these are premium and sit at the top of the range when it comes to quality. So um, this is a cutaway here, as you can see in the screen, of a, I think it's a 70 to 200. But basically, we use ED glass and super ED glass to um, allow the glass, to, uh, the, the light to enter uh, the lens uh, to try and hit the center to corner. And the aspherical lens is used to reduce and minimize any ghosting at the same time. Now, this clip here is showing the, an MTF chart, which is showing how far the lens quality uh, degrades at wide uh, from center to corner. And as you can see here from center to corner, it's it, very little detail is lost. Now, our engineers, I don't know how they do it, but it's incredible. They managed to engineer the uh, glass to uh, 0 0.01 microns. So let's think about a human hair. It's 70 microns thickness so the glass is engineered to 0 0.01 microns it's incredible now the reason why we do this is it allows the glass light to enter the uh, the lens and it doesn't have any aberrations or bounce off any bumps so it goes from center to corner gives you center to corner sharpness and as a result of this technology it's giving you kind of onion uh, ring effect uh, zero onion ring effect in the bokeh as well so it's giving you real uh, crisp clear uh, bokeh balls and when you use more uh, blades in the aperture, uh, uh, the aperture of the lens, then you can see here from 7 to 11, obviously there's more blades, but this is the result that you get. You obviously get a far deeper, shallower kind of look um, and more rounded as well, so more clearer bokeh uh, in that. Now this diagram is showing you one of the first floating mechanisms that we had in our lenses, and uh, it basically shows that when you, for example, use the lens technology for eye autofocus, the lenses will move forward or backwards um, in accordance to how far you're away from the subject matter. And this shows you the effect it has when you see it on the back of the viewfinder. Now, the uh, contact angle as well is obviously very different. Uh, without fluorine coating, you can get some uh, you know, quite messy lenses. And as you can see from this uh, diagram here, that the um, with fluorine coating, the uh, contact angle is is far uh, gives you better results and then if you look at spilling water or, or any heavier liquid on it 
then the lenses will repel this with this coating. So you can see quite clearly here on the left, it doesn't have it and on the right it does. And, and like I said, with heavier kind of uh, liquid, the oil on the right hand side here uh, that I'm seeing from my screen is obviously repelling uh, the oil. You're not obviously going to be doing this deliberately, but rest assured if you accidentally uh, got this on your lenses, then you can wipe them off. So thank you, Mark. That's a really good explanation about GMaster technology. Um, this is an image of my son uh, back last year in lockdown, and uh, we use off-camera flash, and the settings are on the screen uh, as well. So it's an A7R Mark IV, 35mm, 1.4 GMaster uh, with uh, f7.1 low ISO as well. Um, so basically here what we're trying to do is combine the resolution of the sensor of the A7R Mark IV plus a very sharp lens. Um, the green box is my son's eye, and the white box is what I'm going to show you next. Um, this will be the image of the eye at 300%. Um, but the green box is where the AF has found his eye, and it's just stuck on his eye. And all I've done is depress the shutter. Once I've taken the shot, I review it in camera. And on Sony cameras, whenever you go to the sharpest point, it should always go to that point. And in this case, it's the eye. So when I depress the shutter, I literally went straight into the eye here and hopefully you can see on the screen the resolution this is over 300 percent actually straight out of the camera as well just incredible uh, no editing and uh, just fantastic detail and sharpness so let's come on to speed so speed you know what's going on on, on the inside of the lens to produce this level of accuracy and also response time so since the early 1980s, older lens technology used stepping motors with a rotary motion. And now we use linear motors as seen here in the 50mm and also the 400mm telephoto lens. If you didn't know, older motors were mechanical, so they could cause errors in friction. And using linear motors, there's no gears, no mechanical moving parts. They're fast light and also silent, so superb for sports wildlife and also filmmaking. And again, what we're showing you here today is all in-house Sony technology. So still on speed, how do we continuously shoot at high levels of frames per second? Well, so we've seen the motor unit in action. Now we press the shutter and the camera focuses. So here's a series of images, a person on a bike. And as they're going through, the motor stops and goes, stops and goes. And each time it's focusing on the subject. Now the motors are so fast that they can do this action 30 times per second. For example, on the A1, to achieve 30 frames per second continuous burst speed. And an example of this is next. So I was really fortunate to be asked to go to a, a friendly in the summer, a football friendly of my uh, beloved uh, following football team. And um, this is a back of the camera where I've recorded uh, to show you the sequence of shots using this technology. So I'm just gonna play this footage here. And as you can see from each image, every frame has been captured. So the player and the ball are in focus every frame, right through. I could have kept going until the card filled up. So that's the sequence of shots. When I play it back and then forward again, it looks like you're playing a movie. So there's no blackout. There's no shot and black frame, shot and black frame. This is literally, you do not move, uh, lose a moment when you're using this type of technology. Fantastic. So our frames per second has evolved since 2013, and the A7 was groundbreaking. If you can remember that back into 2013, five frames per second for a mirrorless camera was groundbreaking. But as you can imagine, this has dramatically improved with the arrival of the A9 in 2017. A layered sensor, or a stack layered sensor you find with the A9, you can shoot around 300 raw shots to the memory of the sensor before it hits the card. So if you've got one of the fastest SD cards, it will just continue to fill up. Each sensor, uh, works with the processor, so it gives you faster readout speeds. For example, the A1 take this, takes this to another level, 30 frames per second of 50 million pixels each frame. It's just incredibly fast. So let's have a look now at artificial intelligence-based real-time eye autofocus. Mark's going to give us a closer look now at how this actually works. So what do you get then with AF technology with Sony using Sony lenses? So I'm just going to bring this up a second and then I'm going to pause the final image here. So it's artificial intelligence based um, autofocus. In this instance, we call it real time tracking. It's found on a, a, quite a lot of our cameras now, but it takes in consideration color, pattern, distance and also face and eye recognition. Um, some of our cameras also have uh, around 693 AF points, as you can see in this diagram, and um, around 400-odd 
contrast AF. So each individual square here is, is an autofocus point that will react accordingly in, in what we just covered, whether it's color, pattern, uh, auto um, face detection and eye detection as well. So to show you this in action, this boxer here, the green squares are, are, are focusing on that subject because it's nearer to you. It's a moving subject. And again, remember, this is all happening as you're depressing the shutter. So you don't have to think about this. It's actually happening uh, as you do it. So this goes into a bit more detail. Whilst you're covering that sensor, it's found the lady's head, it's found her face, uh, and then it finds the eye. And this is happening again so fast that it just happens in the camera. And as you can imagine, the most important part of the, or the heartbeat of the camera is the engine, is the engine room, which is the sensor and the processor. So it's taken into consideration now here in more detail. Uh, it recognizes a subject. Uh, it, it looks at the pattern, it looks at the distance, and then it all the programmed faces that are in the memory of the camera will then allow you to focus directly here on the face uh, as the uh, video sh uh, shows. So it combines all that technology to give you incredible AF speed. So as Mark was saying there, it's not actually the programmed faces, it's the contours of faces that the artificial intelligence can detect. It knows where our levels of our eyes are, where the nose fits. So even though we have all different faces, it still recognizes it as a human face. So incredible technology. So to confirm, the lens works with the sensor and in tandem with the processor, the software algorithms gives you this incredible focusing opportunities. So here's my son again. Now this is eye autofocus in video. I'm not actually doing anything to the camera. If my hands are away from the camera and it focuses, you know, instantly which is just ridiculously fast now we go to stills and as you can see it finds the eye really really quickly even when he turns to profile and even when he's got something over his head it still detects a face and it knows that when it finds the eye it will take the shot so as you can see it tracks really 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 well we play back into the camera and like i said earlier when you zoom in it goes straight to the sharpest point which in this instance it's the eye just incredible technology now we've put it into post editing only just to see the uh, how far we can go. No editing again, straight out of the camera. And you can see here, I think I managed to put it to about at least 200%. We push it again, the detail's fantastic. Do we push it again? I can't remember if we go to 300%, but 200%, yeah, 300%. Look at that, incredible levels of detail. And of course it works on animals as well. So, so it's not just- lens And we're gonna test it on my dog. So we're gonna select animal eye autofocus to see how sharp this can focus on my dog's eye. So uh, just accessing that in the camera and we focus immediately straight on uh, my dog's eye. You can see when it goes green it's sh uh, taking the shot, when it's white it finds the eye. It's extremely fast. I have to say I've not used a, a G Master lens like this uh, other than the 35mm and the 135. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to customize the focus hold button, the button on the side of the lens to APS-C mode and we're going to go from full frame to APS-C with a flick of a button and you can see here it's gone from 16 million to 26 and it's still as fast in APS-C as it is in full frame. Look at that shallow depth of field as well on the nose and in the background as well. The background is completely blurred out whilst focusing on those eyes. As you can see I took a lot of shots here but we're going to pick up one and see how far we can zoom in in a second but I'm really pleased with that and I crop in uh, post editing as well but that's at 60 million pixels and in post editing you can see here the background and the foreground is completely washed out it's so soft and uh, creative so we're going to zoom in as far, far as we can here and this is a hundred percent and we're then going to go zoom into 200 percent as you can see from the level of detail here the sharpness the moisture around the eyelid the contrast the detail in the fur is absolutely sharp so to recap, the three key fundamentals of innovation we've looked at are resolution uh, in our cameras, speed, and the way that the camera can, can, can perform when it comes to reliable autofocus that just sticks. And it's that handshake with native lenses on a Sony body that gives you the, that level of high performance without the use of an adapter. So to start off, let's have a look at our range. And if you weren't familiar with it, we have the A1. This is our flagship model, the one that does it all. 50 million pixels, 30 frames a second with 8K video and superb low light performance. It's really aimed at the high end professionals, but it is accessible to anybody to buy. 
The A92 is our key camera for speed and autofocus, 24 million pixels with high-end connectivity, ideal for sports, weddings and wildlife. Now for resolution, you should look at the A7R series, the Mark IV being the latest. High resolution, 10 frames a second, ideal for uh, landscapes, commercial product portrait. And for low light, the best one really is the A7S III. Now, this is one of the best cameras we've produced on top of this. It's a high-spec broadcast level camera. We've then got the all-rounder entry level, which is the A7 III, which basically has great low light, great autofocus, and good resolution, but in a more affordable body. And the compact, uh, more retro version is the A7C, which, again, when you mention the word compact, doesn't mean there's any compromise in picture quality or handling. In fact, it just tweaks the A7 III in uh, some performances as well. We then have the FX3, which is our bridge between Alpha and Cinema line. This is a box. It's basically a video-centric product, which is effectively like the A7S Mark III, which now sits between the Alpha series and our Cinema line of professional cameras. And then the APS-C sensors, you're looking at the A6600, same battery as the full frame, with the incredible stills and video performance. Um, a smaller version, which is the A6400, really video focused here, fantastic for streaming as well and doing this type of activity online webinars. And then if you're looking to get into photography, the A6100 is just a fantastic start into photography. Uh, lower end price, but no compromise in picture quality again. And really, really fast autofocus as well. And on top of that, low light performance coming through our lenses and the ability to focus in the dark. Have a look at this. So this is uh, low light shooting, and this is with the A7S Mark III. And you can see I'm going through the ISO uh, from around 80. And as you can see in the image here, a heron is starting to appear. So I was at a hide back at the lo uh, before the last lockdown, and I was testing some kit in low light. And you can see here, as I'm talking, we're going up to 10,000 ISO. And hopefully on your screen, you'll be able to see that the level of detail, but the lack of noise at these high ISOs is just incredible. And I've pulled this out for this webinar because the A7S III is just a specialized camera for low light. Uh, this is a recording in 4K and uh, we're just seeing the back of the screen. So I decided to push it a little bit further and it's just starting to blow out a little bit in the highlights. But at 32,000 ISO, it's just remarkable. I couldn't see that with a naked eye. What I could see was, well, nothing. Um, so in the next bit of footage, it shows that we've got some controlled flash. And I've set the A7S Mark III up to uh, track. Uh, but what's remarkable about this footage is that it focuses in complete darkness. And you can see it here. The red cursor moving around to try and find the eye. There it is. As soon as I just depress the shutter, it goes green. You saw the flash go off. There's the image with the EXIF data there in the camera. And I'm going to zoom in as far as I can go. And you can see the level of detail at that high ISO. It's just crazy. It really is. So not only is it an amazing, uh, the A7S series is amazing for video. Um, we don't see much footage these days around stills, but it is a fantastic stills camera. We try it one more time. On the left-hand side, you'll see the burst uh, indicator to show you how many shots you're taking. We've got 1,250 ISO. We zoom into the camera again. Incredible detail. So that was a good example of not just focusing normally, but also in the dark. And again, fantastic to see that uh, from literally nothing. I couldn't see anything with the naked eye. But before we go through to the lens range, I just wanted to split uh, the different lenses into different categories. So um, I'll, I'll talk to you in more detail here. So we, we have the Sony standard lenses, uh, which is aimed at more entry to mid-level, good build quality, 50mm f1.8 and also 35mm f1.8. And then we move on to the Zeiss and Sony collaboration. They've been working together since 1996. I personally find these lenses are fast and bright. Now, some of them are f1.4 and incredibly sharp um, and very bright, so they give a very clean look. Um, the Sony G standard lenses are not G master quality, but not far off. Now, they're higher build quality, faster autofocus, quieter and ideal for movies, uh, excellent build quality too. And then we go to our premium lens range, which is the G master. Now, you're talking center to corner sharpness. You're talking no artifacts, no chromatic aberration. Uh, incredible build quality. 
And you know, this is, if you want the best out of the whole range, then the G Master I would highly recommend. So we mentioned earlier, we've now have 64 native lenses at 44 full frame, 20 APS-C. And, and since 2013, we've introduced many lenses from wide angle, kit lenses. Uh, we've looked at uh, telephoto lenses, including 400 mil, 600 mil, 200, 600. And most of what we've got is just uh, covers a huge range of focal lengths. So the best thing to do is if you are out and about this weekend, come to the trade show because we'll have lots of these lenses for you to look at, have a test, and you may even save yourself a little bit of money as well. So here are some of the full frame lenses, as you can see. Um, there's a variety available in the full frame range. Up oh, next, Mark's going to pick out a few lenses with a quick overview of how they perform with different images to show. But it just shows you here in more detail. You've got the 35 f2.8 Zeiss, um, the G Master uh, uh, prime lenses like the 24, 35, 100, 135, real special lens, that 135, 72, 100 G Master, 100 to 400, and so on. So again, if you get a chance this weekend at the trade show, come and see us. So here's Mark with a selection of lenses to give you an idea of what the looks you get with each different type of lens. So we're going to look at the 85 G Master. Again, the style you get with this, completely washed out, amazing bokeh and center sharpness. And I've chosen IAF, Animal IAF here. I think this was the A9 Mark II maybe. And it's gone straight to the center of the picture. Uh, the dog's eye is really in focus. I go to 200%. Sharpness is incredible. This is straight out of the camera. There is no editing with this at all. This is just using the software to zoom in. The F4, 200, 70 to 200. I love this lens it's lightweight and uh, compact compared to the 7200 but you don't get as washed out uh, uh, background as you do on the G Master but look the detail is excellent you can see the detail in the feathers and the, and the feet and I'm really really pleased with this especially in lockdown in the garden uh, and taking photographs of the birds on the bird feed and finally in this one this is 7200 G Master this is the A7S Mark III really really low light conditions control flash uh, but I can't remember what the ISO was on this but um, I'm just looking at the sharpness really more than anything and you can see even in really dark conditions uh, the focusing on the camera was able to uh, focus in, in really you know, poor light uh, this was the shot after the flash was taken so you can imagine before it was taken uh, it was you know pretty much completely uh, black so moving on to some more uh, full frame E-mount lenses, we now have uh, here some of the Zeiss Sony collaboration, 90mm macro, fantastic macro uh, with uh, the ability obviously to use that as a, a portrait lens as well. Uh, other focal lengths like 70 to 300 and then some of our entry levels such as the f1.8 50mm um, and, and so on right up to include converters, uh, both uh, teleconverters and also wide angle and uh, other converters as well. And there's also the trio of the lenses, the new compact range. Again, no compromising picture quality, but very small compact, fantastically uh, combined with the A7C. Uh, here's Mark again with some more lens uh, looks and information. So this is a picture of my son. I just wanted to show you, this is on the 135 millimeter G Master, how that background is just completely washed out with the plant and the fire. And again, how sharp it is in the center. So straight to the eye, eye auto focus. This is on the A1 when I tested it the other week. 100%, then 200%, and then 300%. And you can see it's just completely sharp. Now, I managed to go out for a walk. There was a kite up in the sky, beautiful day uh, last weekend. And uh, this is roughly with the naked eye how far away it was, uh, the first image you saw there. And then we're zooming in by 100, 200%. So it starts to break down a little bit. But then as it circled around, I put the camera into crop mode so it drops from 50 to 21 million pixels with the 100 to 400 uh, G Master. And you can see here, uh, I can't remember what the f-stop was on here, but this is between 4.5, 5.6 on the lens. The detail cropping at 300% is incredible. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. Yes, the A1 is a very fast uh, autofocus camera, but the sharpness on this lens is phenomenal. So, you know, I could probably use that more than just a reference tool and, and actually uh, use the image in a, in, a, in a good way. So let's come on to our E-mount APS-C lenses. Okay, we've got 20 in the range. Now, the, the, the whole point of the APS-C range is to offer another uh, alternative to full frame and in a small compact body. Uh, and these cameras are very lightweight, uh, as well are the lenses. So you go from super wide angle, 10 to 18. The crop factor equivalent is you times the focal length by 1.5 times, and that'll give you the full frame equivalent. So the 10 to 18 would be a 15 
to 24, something like that. Uh, we have power zoom lenses and then higher quality uh, APS-C lenses like the 16 to 55G. And then these lenses, if you get a chance to have a look, we'll have some at the trade show on Saturday, are really small and lightweight. And we've got movie, uh, uh, filmmaking uh, lenses as well to uh, support our um, stills range as well. And then finally, coming on to the rest of this range, little street photography lenses like the Pancake lens, 20 and 16 mil, they weigh hardly anything. And even a, a 30 mil macro, a fantastic little uh, uh, lens that, you, again, you can put in your, your jacket pocket, let alone a bag. And one of our most popular lenses, the telephoto zoom, the 55 to 210. Now, this is the equivalent of, say, a 300 mil lens in, in your pocket. It always reminds me like of a coffee cup size um, uh, uh, range. But it really is small. But having that focal length in the palm of your hand uh, is a, a really good example of how lightweight this system is. And then finally, there's a huge amount of accessories as well included with the lens range, including the ability to bring over A-mount lenses uh, to the E-mount system with different adapters. And if you weren't aware, we also sell microphones, adapters, uh, grips and uh, remote controls as well. So thank you for joining us for this pre-recorded webinar about lenses, which has gone out live today on the Facebook live page of Campkins Cameras. Don't forget, you can see all these lenses that we talked about today at the trade show at the Guildhall in Cambridge on Saturday the 30th, where myself and my colleague Mike will be there to answer any of your questions and demonstrate any of these lenses. And of course, we're joined by our special guest, Glyn Dewis, who we've worked with uh, quite a few times now over the last two years in lockdown. It'll be a great chance to uh, speak to Glyn and actually see him face to face and listen to him. He's got a talk uh, in the afternoon as well. And just to remind you as well, this whole week we do have uh, offers online and at the trade show as well. And on top of that, our cashback campaign would have started as well. And as you can see here, uh, there is additional money off as well. So don't forget, uh, there's offers throughout the week and also at the trade show. Uh, without further ado, thank you ever so much for joining us. We'll see you on the uh, Saturday at the trade show and uh, we'll see you again soon online as well. Thank you for joining us. All the best. Mm -hmm.